Yeah, we've got one five length or two. Two. Yeah. I got it right here. It's been about an hour. They hit well. They're not. They're not listed by. They're like BP number one twenty three, and I'm like, now how am I supposed to know which BP number? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. So. All right, let's call the uh, January 21st meeting of the Kingston Springs Board of Commissioners to order. Can everybody please stand and face the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States, of States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Ms. Finch, let's call the uh, call the roll. Gross. Here. Lately. Here. Here. Stone. Here. All right, we have a quorum. Uh, the minutes have been circulated. Everybody's had a chance to read those. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes from the December 17th meeting? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The agenda has been uh, been circulated. Of course, you've all had a chance to read through it. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? Do you have any additions that need to be made? Anything, changes, nothing? Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Announcements from Commissioner. Are we here? You got anything? Uh, the only thing I would say is that I liked your report, Debbie. It was real good. That you sent out. Oh, okay. good. Financial report? Yeah. Okay. I just thought it was even now I understood part of it. Well, good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, I uh, just wanted to say I tried out our newest restaurant, Barley Pops, last night. Okay. And uh, they soft opened a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we're looking at grand open February 6th. So the fried chicken was excellent. Congratulations to the Parks Department for that uh, recognition of the Tier 1 program. It's, uh, it's nice. it's well, I guess I, I have two things. The first thing is we had a initial meeting of the uh, kind of the farmers market vendors, and we're going to have another one on February 6th. Maybe we can all, isn't it 4th? Oh, it's actually February 4th, so we can't go to the follow it up by going to Barley Pops, right? <laughs> Uh, but the vendors were there. They're all excited about the new season. We had, uh, I think, about 23 people there that night, and that was at Datka. The next one's going to be here. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to pull it together and have another uh, good, good farmers market season. And the other thing, I, I'm sure Mike's going to get to it later, but I, from his report, but I want to congratulate uh, Debbie on, on creating an award-winning budget this year. I mean, we didn't need a need the the paper to show that you you could do that, but. It's nice to have, so congratulations. Mike deserves credit for and, putting and Mike, it together. Mike, 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 we're getting it together. Yeah, thanks to both of you for putting you. in such hard work and uh, producing great results. So that's, that's all I have. So. All right, community input and concerns. Uh, if you've got anything to, to address the commission with, could you step up to the podium and uh, state your name and address, and uh, then you can uh, address the commission? So we're all looking at you, Mike. Single file, please. Single file. <laughs> I just came to watch. Just came to watch. Okay. All right. All right. Well, the, we can move on to the consent agenda. Then, uh, <coughs> motion to approve. Motion to approve. All right. Uh, second. Second. All right. We'll go and move on to the city. Or sorry, all in favor. All, all right. right. Opposed. No. Go ahead, Mike. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the first thing, I just had a couple items. Uh, the first thing was just that uh, last Friday was really kind of the culmination of a, I don't want to call it a doomsday scenario, but we had uh, three pretty uh, kind of involved grant applications that were due uh, all on the same day. Uh, so we got all three of those grant programs uh, applied to and everything sent off on deadline. Um, 
and we requested close to a million dollars. I think when we added it up, close to a million dollars of funding. Uh, the three things uh, were, of course, a, a FEMA grant for the assistance to firefighters, 95-5 match. Uh, you saw the infographic. I think I put that on the infographic that went out last week. Um, and that comes out in March. Uh, there's a state multimodal uh, grant that we applied to, close to half a million dollars for sidewalks on Lodden Hills. There were 34 uh, applications sent in statewide on that. Uh, they'll fund, depending on what the price is, they'll fund somewhere between 13 and 14 of that 34. Um, so you got a sense of the numbers. And then uh, Safe Routes to School uh, was a quarter million dollar request uh, for sidewalks <coughs> and then a bike, sit, uh, bike ped safety program at the middle school. Um, there were 14 applications uh, that came in on those statewide. I think last year they funded 13 applications, fully funded 13 applications. So those are, those are good numbers. Um, do you have any questions about the grants uh, we've been working on the past couple months? What is the uh, projected uh, data going to make the announcement on the, did you say that on multimodal? Multimodal was like mid-May. Mid-May. Um, we don't have a firm date, obviously. They told us mid-May last year. We didn't find out until close to July. Um, but uh, they, they anticipate probably mid-May. The next thing uh, is kind of cool. Uh, there's, I think, 35. 35 is the number we put in the press release. Um, parks departments across the state that uh, participate in this benchmarking program that TDEC does and pretty much what it does it looks at all the policies and all of the uh, events and all of the oversight and all of the public input and uh, I think there were 13 or 14 different categories that they you had to have something to show for on each of the categories but uh, we, uh, we submitted for that uh, back in November October uh, Brandy and Scott and the Parks Advisory Board and I all came kind of came together and put together an application for it. We were rated a tier one program, which is kind of the base level. Uh, there's only two, I think, tier three, you get tier one, tier two, and tier three. There's only a couple of tier three. But pretty much everyone's a tier one uh, program across the state. It gets you extra points if you go out for future trails grants or parks grants or anything like that for the next five years. It also gets the county uh, some credit on their uh, three-star application. Good news there. Um, we also got word this week, and there'll be a press release going out, I think, on Monday uh, about our, uh, our budget last year. Uh, when we sat down and started talking about budget, when I first showed up, uh, you know, the board kind of told me that they wanted to, to make uh, what we do in City Hall, what we do with the budget, a little more transparent. Uh, have a little more public participation. So we had our, uh, our process where we invited the public to come and do the ice cream social thing. And then uh, afterwards, the end product of uh, what was passed, uh, we put together these uh, kind of lengthy uh, listing of really everything you ever wanted to know. Um, and so we put that together, pushed it out. It's at the library, it's at City Hall, it's on our website. Um, and by culminating all that information, putting it together, and explaining what we did uh, with our budget and how it's run, how we're run fiscally, um, we sent that off to uh, a professional association. They graded it and, and gave us this distinguished budget presentation. Um, it's the only national budget award that's given. Uh, and I think last year there were 16 cities in, uh, in the state that earned the designation. So kind of a kind of rare and, and kind of cool and uh, definitely I think a symptom of one the work that Debbie and staff kind of put into preparing the budget and then two I think the board's priorities of making everything kind of uh, transparent and, uh, and that. so you'll see a press release I think on first of the week about that. Uh, there was a request that came in this week from Public Works they had a, uh, a 2000 and 2002 uh, Chevy pickup truck. This is a, a Chevy 2500 that had already been surplus. And typically, and Jennifer may want to weigh in on this, um, typically, you know, when we surplus something, we, we kind of hold it until we can auction it out or get bids on it to, to just kind of sell it. Um, 
public works has been kind of uh, brought up, uh, approached by our septic contractor to do a swap. They, they want the truck in turn. Uh, they wanted to get a, uh, like a trailer that has what they call a hydro jetter on it. And it's just uh, pretty much you can do pressure washing with it. You can stick an attachment down in a sewer pipe and blow things out of a sewer pipe. Um, so there's some use to it. Uh, but they had requests instead of just waiting for it to be sold that they swap with the lead on Holtz or septic uh, contract for this hydro jetter. So the trucks are already been surplus. Uh, we just wanted to see if we could swap it out. Great. Oh, something that Mike that you mentioned is, is that the budget's on the website, and if you guys haven't taken a look at the website, Mike's done some really great work on that as well. It's, don't just go for the budget, stick around for all the other good stuff too. So. There's a lot of work to do on the, but on the website still. Um, we'll probably do some final steps <coughs> and, then, and then do a big kind of press piece about that maybe in February. Um. On the equipment, on the equipment um, first of all, I think it needs to be approved by motion, and then I think the motion needs to be contingent upon having some kind of and where we would get some kind of market analysis, not necessarily an appraisal, but just some kind of value to make sure that, that, that we are, it, it's a fair deal for the city. Um, you know, and if we would get that, I guess, and we can sell such type of equipment line, but if we could get just something on that, and if the board could just approve a motion um, that basically contingent upon it being a true equitable trade that, that y'all approve it for that to be done. We have a motion. We do that now. That's fine. Motion to approve the swap of the surplus pickup truck with the hydro jetter. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. It passes. Thank you. Uh, uh, next, just a couple things. I just wanted to tell you what we're what we're working on uh, the retreat. Is, uh, is I think a week from tomorrow. So uh, we've got our place. Uh, I have a ton, of, a ton of work to do, uh, and I think staff does as well. So we'll be uh, kind of doing some prep work on that the next week. Um, the mayor mentioned it earlier, but uh, I've got a kind of a litany of things to do on the website, and then we'll probably I may hook it up to the TV and walk you through some of it uh, by the time we're done with that. And then I just uh, kind of wanted to give you a heads up. We uh, were tallying, I broke open the uh, surveys today and, and gotten out of the envelopes and they're sitting on a pile waiting to kind of be uh, culminated and tallied and all that stuff, uh, hopefully for the retreat. Um, we're at 389 as of today. So there's 372 paper and then 17 electronics. I haven't looked at any of them yet, but it's great that it's all the orange sheets, or the gold sheets that we had sent out. It's all the original colors, so we know there hasn't been any duplication and that sort of thing. So, pretty excited about that, and, uh, and we'll talk about that at retreat. So, just kind of on the uh, docket for next month, we don't have a whole lot. Uh, we're still waiting for our audit for the year that ended last June. Um, so we'll give you some highlights on that, and then I'll also have kind of a summary of retreat. That's all I have. I'll share any questions. Do you have anything with the financial report, Debbie? No, but you don't have any questions. Any questions from Debbie? Everybody got a chance to take a look at it, I think. Seems like everything is taking along as it should, so. All right, Jennifer, do you have anything? I do have something. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know if y'all saw in the paper, but the uh, Sheriff's Department is taking strong stance um, serving to minors. Um, there's a huge issue with juveniles in this county, um, consumption of alcohol and drugs, and so they kind of, Sheriff's Department's done a special task force, and as part of that, they, they've had two raids, actually. Um, and we have several here in Houston's raids. Um, we have the one is the sudden service
they're both, um, the one individual is a Kurt, Kurt Kumar Patel um, that said to a minor, and he has had his first appearance in general sessions, and he is due to go for a hearing day on February 2nd. The next one is the 129, I think that may be the is a Caleb Kilgore that's been charged for those in proper still circle in Texas Springs. And he is also to be going, he is also scheduled to go to court on 210. Um, the other one is uh, JD's Market, 2005 Highway 70. The individual arrested on that is a Narendra Patel um, out of Nashville, and he is also scheduled for February the 10th. So, um, and then we have a new one. And this one does not have a date scheduled yet because this buzz was just done on January the 8th. And um, the individual that was arrested on this one was a Melissa Willoughby that resides in Nashville. And this is for. So, dudes, wine, and spirits, and, and I don't know this, um, I'm being fairly new with this, but I assume that they got their beer from Matt Crawley from the ABC as a liquor store. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so y'all do this? They don't have they beer. They do not have a beer permit. They don't have a beer permit. They have packaged liquor. Okay. But no beer permit. So what it doesn't say in the report, it just says an alcohol sale. So the law is just totally messed up when it comes to liquor and wine and beer. Um, you've had all this change in the, last, in the last year, and then you've got the other change that takes effect on July the 1st. So if you have a convenience store, and they, they will come to the city and get a beer they sell to a minor, they have a violation, um, then we have a right to bring them in front of the beer board. Um, and, you know, once, what I would recommend is we wait until after February the 10th, see what happens with that, <coughs> and then we do a special call meeting for the beer board and cite them from here. Um, and at that time, we can discuss what your options are. If they are a, um, there's two different kinds of vendors under the beer board law. You have the, the one vendor that goes through and gets the special certification, um, and they get that through the ABC Alcohol and Beverage Commission. If that beer board, or if that vendor has gone through that process, then you are limited as a beer board what you can and can't do. Uh, if they have not gone through that process, then you have a lot more um, latitude in what you do. So um, after February the 10th, need to check with the ABC, see what their classification is, um, and that way we'll know better how we're going to treat them. Um, I don't know if you've had any violations in the past, um, how y'all handle those, if you've done suspensions, if you've done fines, um, and I probably need to look at y'all's beer board, you know, what you actually have on the books for the beer board, but it may be something y'all want to discuss at the retreat. Um, just to kind of give you some something to, to consider. Um, and I can see by between now and next weekend if I can find out from the ABC if they have a special certification as, as the, and they don't have a certification. <coughs> can't think of the name of it. Um, but to see if they have a certification. Because if they do, they're going to know what you can do. Now, since they've gotten the liquor store, um, I'm kind of curious because it doesn't say in the offense report and the charge has not actually come through general sessions yet, it's not in their computer system, but I'm curious to see if they actually busted them at dudes for the purchase of beer. I'm making the broad assumption that, that they did. Um, typically, the Alcoholic Beverage Commission controls all liquor 
for storage and liquor by the drink. The city has to do a certificate of time compliance when they initially open the liquor store, and then you have a right to make them do a renewal of that. Um, since the law changed back last July, liquor stores can now sell beer. And so with that, the ABC pretty much still controls all of that. So if, I don't know if they are selling beer, but that may be something we need to get law, local law enforcement to find out the answer to that question. But if they are selling beer, then I'm making the assumption that they have a license from the ABC if we don't have one. You know, and, and I was told, I don't know how much this is backstory, but that they do have beer. But it's a out beer that's a much higher alcohol level, which allows them to do that. That they can't buy like Bud Light or something like that in there is what they we've been told. are selling beer. But well, and, so. and so here's here's the issue is, and we're running into this in Ashland City. We have um, we have three liquor stores now, but in the past we've only had two, and so we have Jackson Liquors and Mulberry, and Mulberry was also involved in the steam. So, kind of the question that I have, since all of this is a fairly new law, is, it's my understanding, and I, I've called the representative from MTAS, and I've played fun tech, and she's on an hospital with her for like a week, but it's my understanding that the ABC has a control. Once you are a packaged liquor store, even if you're selling Bud Light, or Coors Light, or whatever it is, that that all falls under ABC's umbrella, and that we have no control over that. So we don't issue the permit, so therefore, because we don't issue a permit, we cannot do a suspension, and we cannot do a fine. Um, does that mean we need a rollover debt if we're not happy about it? No, I think we can make a formal complaint with the ABC. Um, with that said, that has been done before. Um, I've done that, I wrote city attorney So I just kind of want y'all to be aware of all of that. And of course, um, I understand from Debbie and Mike, it's not an issue, um, but the line would start taking effect uh, on July 1st of this year. So I understand that if that's, you know, they not have a referendum and that was never passed here. So that adds a whole different level to, to the alcohol. And I think the legislature is going to have to come in and clarify and clear all this up because it's just, Right now it's kind of a mess. Um, so anyway, so the three that we do control, um, I will try and find out, and I think they're responsible vendors, if they're responsible vendors. If they're responsible vendors, then you as a beer board are limited to what you can do. Um, and then I guess um, we need to look and see if they find any prior violations. Because uh, that would have some control. So that may, that just kind of maybe something for y'all to discuss at your workshop, and then after this February the 10th court date, and we get a little bit more clarification of if they are responsible vendors, then we can schedule a special call meeting and uh, discuss how you want to handle that. It's like that. So the beer board would be addressing the business, not the individual? That is correct. That is correct. Your control is over who you issue the, the license to. Um, the individual that actually sells the beer, it's a misdemeanor, and that would be up to the court to, to handle that individual. Um, so, and I, you don't necessarily have to wait until the court day, but I made the assumption that y'all would probably want to know what, what happened with the court charges. So. Jennifer, you said uh, <clears throat> the county has a task force. Is that who's doing this now? That's who's doing it. They, they have started, and it's not, it's, it's a group of individuals um, who have decided to kind of take this on as their project. Um, we have a lot of issues in this county with meth. Um, there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of uh, deaths and overdoses in the last six to nine months, uh, a whole lot. Um, and most of them have been between the 18, 21 bracket. <coughs> So this group kind of formed a coalition and then they had put pressure on 
the sheriff's department to do this. Um, they have, and I don't know why they didn't send it to Kingston Springs, I guess maybe because I kind of put a halt on it with Ashland City, but they had sent a resolution that they wanted the Ashland City Fair Board to pass that said, <laughs> that wanted to, for the beer board, they were wanting to tell the beer board what they had to do for first violation, second violation, and all of this. And I was kind of like with Ashland City, I was like, well, that's that's the whole beer board's decision on how they want to handle it. And sometimes things are not always black and white. And, um, and then they didn't understand about the responsible vendor, how you can't have a mandatory with them because they are protected Anyway, so I kind of went around with them. So they had this resolution they wanted all the beer boards and the counties and cities to pass. And I guess somehow I got to Ashland City first, and that was kind of the end of it. Because uh, I don't know how I would have stayed long. So I think they wanted me to rewrite it for them. They said, You can send us a proposal. And then we don't want to do anything. So yes, that's kind of where a lot of this is kind of come from. So. Certain individuals. Certain individuals. I have questions. I mean, I know it's it's a little confusing with the way everything's classified now. And beer is not just beer anymore because it's <coughs> sold in liquor stores. And, you know. yeah. Well, this group of concerned mm -hmm. citizens, so to speak, from Ashland City, what kind of legal legal ease do they have? What kind of degree do they have? Or <coughs> are they just individuals just like us? Well, I know that Jake Walker, who was our public defender, right. was on the board, um, and Sheriff Breedlove was on the board. Uh, I don't really know any much of any of the other individuals. Diane Pat, we, Hi, uh, she's, she's involved somehow. We've been yes. contacted by Diane as a county commissioner as well. So. And then um, <coughs> I think that Trish Sanders is up there. That's who I've dealt with. So I don't know. There's representatives from, of That's more or less why I'm asking that question because I've been in a sting before with own convenience stores and it's it's not a pleasant thing when it's done like an entrapping situation. So I just want to make sure that we don't we don't try to make something there that's not there. Okay? And you know, that's why I'd rather hear what the court has to say because normally they pass the judgment and if it's first offense and they get so much after that, it's, you know, but hopefully that will stop them from any further activity. I think all you got to do is be cited one time, go to court, be arrested, whatever, and, you know, because you got to look at some of these individuals they bring in, they look old enough, and you get busy, and speed does it, and that's what happens a lot of times. It's not an intention on their part. They just made a mistake because it didn't card 100% of the paper. The, the only issue is, is that the state of Tennessee two or three years ago required you to card 100% of the paper. Right. Right. That's, that's what that's you know, the that's, law. That's what happened to years. us. You know, the guy that did the selling, he was honest as they come along. He didn't realize he was making a mistake, but you know it happened. So. And they had informants that they sent. I pulled all the offense reports, and I, I think, at least, I don't know that they have the same informant for all of them. Um, one of them, they had an 18-year-old white female, a 19-year-old white female, and a 19-year-old white female, but I think another one had a 20-year-old. Well, females today look a whole lot different than when I was growing up. So. <laughs> <laughs> I probably think they're low enough. <laughs> if y'all want copies of any of this um, for the beer board meeting, 
I'll be glad to make copies for this. At the retreat, maybe. Okay. I'll get my home, get these things. And I'll, I'll give you a copy of our ordinance too. Okay, that'd be great. <coughs> and that's all I have. Thank you. All right, we, we have no unfinished business, so we can move right on to, to new business. Uh, the first item is uh, we're re uh, this is, doesn't require a commission vote, but Chuck Slater and, and Tom Collin are being reappointed to the commission for a new term, a uh, new three year term starting this year and ending in 2019. And uh, the, the next item is resolution 16-001 donation to the park. Would you like to walk us through that, Mike? Uh, I hope so. Uh, yeah, this is uh, in your packets. It's just a one-page uh, resolution to donate to the ARC. This was a budgeted donation. Uh, I think that uh, we had we incorporated this year's budget and it seems appropriate. Uh, I'm sure you don't have anything to add to the resolution. No, just um, state law requires somewhat stringent uh, if you're making donations to charitable or non-profit civic organizations and um, they have to provide a annual audit. Um, yes, they do. As long as they do that and they'll approve it by resolution, that's fine. I know for some um, charitable or non-profit civics that audit becomes an issue, so they have to produce that. What is that about? All right, do we have a motion to approve 16 001? Motion to approve. Second? Motion. Anyone have any comments or questions, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And none, resolution passes. Just one more paper around here. There we go. <coughs> Resolution 16-002, use of meeting room by the uh, Cheatham County Veterans Service Office. This is the first comment is out of order, but it, it was 15. Thanks. Um, in your packets, this is item number 9C, and I'm just kind of walk you through this. Uh, the past, I think we were approached maybe in early December by the, uh, the Chief County Veterans Service Office. They uh, they wanted to try and have some field uh, time in the field, so to speak, some office hours that weren't just in Ashton City. Uh, so they had contacted us, they had contacted Pegram, they had contacted uh, Pleasant View, uh, trying to set a location uh, for uh, you know, those office hours. Uh, what's came to pass is that they are actually here operating out of uh, this meeting hall on Wednesdays. Um, on Wednesdays from, I think it's 8.30 or 9 o'clock until 3, 3.30. Uh, those are kind of the flexible hours every day. And what it is is we provide them a space here that's kind of, you know, separate from the hustle and bustle of City Hall, uh, something that has facilities and has a little kitchenette, has Wi-Fi access to where she can use her laptop and print off documents. And, um, so she's she's been over here, she's had one date, and then yesterday would have been date number two, of course, the snow and the ice. Uh, she didn't make it over here yesterday. But she's been here for the first uh, Wednesday, this was two Wednesdays ago. She saw seven folks, uh, all veterans who were all eligible for benefits. Uh, one of them was actually on our planning commission. But uh, all residents, uh, both in here and around the area, and uh, it's been it's worked out well. Um, towards the end of that day, we were kind of, I think, a sinking feeling in our stomachs kind of came over. We uh, had found out that she had been using the dais, uh, and that 89-year-old vet was trying to get up on the dais in the process, fell, uh, and and then the whole kind of insurance question. Talked to Bob Counter, who runs the office of Ashley City, uh, and he said, "Well, we've got some insurance that will help cover this." Uh, on the second page of your docket item, this is actually a, a copy of the insurance policy for these office hours. Down at the bottom left, it, it just names us as the policyholder, um, and then 
we were also just kind of in talking the situation over with uh, with Jennifer and, and Mark Brook, uh, trying to figure out, you know, did we have all of our bases covered? And uh, we were kind of uh, made aware, I guess, that Pegram was passing a resolution kind of authorizing the use of the facility uh, and requesting insurance. Uh, and so we had asked for a copy of that resolution <coughs> and, and kind of put our information in there. And uh, is there anything specific? Yeah, I would like to add, because we, we just done the certificate on the insurance. It's just, um, we could add on that after certificate of liability insurance to the town in an amount of a million dollars. That is what the amount of the policy is. Just so we have a specific amount in the uh, resolution. You might want to be listed as additional insured on there, not just a certificate of And I think that it's... Yeah, it's got additional insured, but that's what they sent us today. So we okay. need to get some clarification. Okay. We need to pass it with the amendment. If you look at the certificate, it says the expiration date is uh, 2014. Well, we thought maybe our eyes were just bad. <laughs> it is simply <laughs> It does look like a five there, but that six okay. is a very, but down at the bottom here, down one, yeah, it looks. That looks more like a four. It does look more mm -hmm. weird. But that would be, that'd be backwards, I suppose, because it says valid from July 1 to July 1 to 14. That's the, it's not the, not the best copy. Is that just something that happened in the in the copying of the certificate, or is that what the it original was, looks like? It was faxed over to the, yeah. um, and I can touch base with Bob again and, and get a not faxed copy that uh, that does name us as an additional insurer. Yeah, an email copy would be better. Yeah, it does show. Accepting sealed bids and then you know 
what the bid packets and what the bid sheets look like. Um, they're slightly different. This is just the one for the electrician. I think I've got four of the nine drafted, five of the nine drafted, but uh, uh, it is time to renew these contracts, and so I just want your permission to go out, go out the bid. All right, do we have a, uh, a motion to approve to advertise for the bids <laughs> for these services? Motion to approve. Second? Second. Any comments, questions? Mr. Mayor, I will add uh, that in addition to putting things on, uh, you know, the advocate and, and calling folks and saying, hey, are you going to bid this out? Um, since I've been here in the spring, we started using a company called Vendor Registry. Um, and encouraged kind of competition amongst our vendors and we used it for the website, we used it for uh, the public history thing, uh, and I think we've used it a third time as well. Oh, for the attorney, um, for the attorney position, but it's just a way for us to send our bids out to companies that are registered out of, you know, Bristol and, and Knoxville and Columbia and, you know, Memphis, all over the place. So hopefully a lot more eyes are, are being laid on this and it may get us some more. Anything else anyone would like to add to that? Two year contract is the reason why we just did two, two years or not three or four? Or? It could be longer actually, but I think I've had some comments from, from our mowing vendor asking for longer contracts, but those are just, we've always just, had two years. A lot of them don't want to hold the prices for more. Okay. Anything else? All in favor? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. See you all next Friday.